Hello, welcome to my hobby room. And today on my table we have feature packed 3D printers main board by Big 3 Tech. It is Manta E3 Easy version 1. Keep in mind that my opinion might be altered as I haven't purchased this board myself and it was provided to me for free by Big 3 Tech. Manufacturer presents this board as drop in replacement for one of the most popular 3D printers, Creality Ender 3. And it is actually has some issues with Ender 3 version 2, more about it later. Worth mentioning that this board definitely will work with any other 3D printer on the market. Just simply make sure board mounting holes and dimensions will match your printer. You can find schematics and related documentation at the official big 3 tech GitHub repository. I will share all the links into the description. Uh, when you're buying this board, you need to buy a board, SB1 model and drivers. That's what I have on my table and we will focus on the board in this video. As a standard, in the box we have rubber duck. Very nice to see connectors or actual parts you need to splice the wires if you need to change something in your 3D printer. Little thank you note and the board itself into the back. I'll throw away the box. I haven't opened this board yet and I haven't used this board yet. So this video will be only unboxing and basic feature overview. Let's break the seal. I'm actually very surprised how small this board, even I've seen the documentation, even I played with similar boards before, but the amount of features this board has is very substantial. The board itself can be powered with 12 to 24 volts power supply, and it also has an opportunity to separately supply motors with own power source over standalone screen terminals. In this case, each driver has own voltage jumper with which you can configure driver power source. It is up to 48 volts. Big 3 Tech keeps pushing their new EZ drivers further, and that's what we have to install on this board in order to make it work. I have drivers out here, also provided by Big 3 Tech. And at this point, company has converted most popular driver chips to their EZ platform, which have a smaller footprint and also pre-installed heatsink, and you can easily find them at Big 3 Tech website. It has foolproof feature, so you can't put the driver wrong way. And just place it in like a little cartridge we used to use on our consoles, you slide it in. Very easy, and the height of the drivers, I tested that before on other boards, is lower than actually standard drivers that we used to use with uh, standard heatsink. I'm gonna install all the drivers on the board now. The board has five separate drivers and it supports one driver dual Z setup if you need. So we have six ports out here. Let's say you wanna run either synchronized Z axis or you want to use separate driver for your second Z axis. Let me uh, slide in CB1 model on the board. So CB1 model comes in a box, also with the duck. One more time, I have the place for them. We have little antenna. I have CB1 model sealed. I also take the box out of the table. Usually you want to buy CB1 with heatsink because the computer actually gets very hot and I will use my uh, heatsinks for Raspberry Pi I bought in the bulk. Installation of CB1 also is uh, foolproof. The board is actually shorter on this side than on this side and you can simply align the board in, snap it on the ports and here you have full setup so you can run Clipper on the compute model itself and Overall, it's very light, small, 90 setup, very, very packed. People mentioned this board does not work without CB1 model or Compute Model 4, but out here I can see a little switch that we can pick between UR and CM4. Uh, so I would challenge the, this knowledge, and I think this board actually pretty easy will work via UART with TFT. 
I will try to use this board without the compute model later and leave my comment under this video. So when we got everything installed, we can actually start talking about this uh, board. We have a variety of external screen supports and unfortunately onboard CSI and DSI ports for camera and display serial connection only work with Raspberry Pi compute model, not the CB1. But you can still use SPI TFT screen and we also have micro HDMI here and regular XP1 port. If you want to connect widely spread screen such as 12864, and it is actually possible to make Ender 3 V2 colored knob screen working, but it requires some rewiring. And uh, so I will share a link into the description to the article that uh, explains how to do it. So there is no reason to spend a lot of time talking about standard features and ports on this board, but we'll go through them really quickly. So we have three controlled fan ports. You can control them based on the temperature of hot end or the heat bed. And we have two non-controlled fan ports, one here, one here. We have RGB, BL touch, a very nice opportunity to connect out a power off feature. If you, let's say, have uh, lost the power to the printer, you can uh, safely pause the print and then continue it after the power goes in. We also have opportunity to enable sensorless homing for each of the drivers. One of my favorite features that Big Edge board have and other manufacturers start to implement it, it's FD CAN connector that allows you to extend functionality of your board or of your 3D printer with external CAN bus models such as SB2240 or others. And most noticeable upgrade for most 3D printer hobbyists here is GPIO pin of your compute model, which can give endless possibilities and functionalities. You can do a lot of custom stuff with this board without using extra space in your 3D printer. And the next very interesting feature of this board you can see on a silk screen right here. The board allows you to use dual heater setup, which has not only separate screw in terminals for the heater, we also have extra thermal sensor to be connected here. So you either can control second tool head or you can control chamber directly from this board. Let's say if you print plastics that tend to warp a lot. I would like to address a few moments before you actually will try to install this board. The compute model SD card located at the bottom of the board, which means all the work with the software have to be done for your deployment before you install the board into the electronics box. As a space in Ender 3's electronics box a bit tight, I would recommend to connect everything to screw in terminals before screwing the board into the place. And one of the most important things with Ender 3 V2 that I mentioned before has actually originally was discovered by Modbot, where mounting point for backplate cover is located right under SD card. So your SD card is sticking and you're hitting SD card which is pushing the SD card down and breaking the port. So keep that in mind and it is easy to fix this issue. You can easily just modify the cover and I recommend watching original ModBot video. You will be able to see what kind of modifications he done to the Ender 3 V2 in order to fix this problem. It is a bit frustrating that four months have passed since this issue was originally discovered and we still don't have either new revision of this board or at least simple warning of such problem into the Big Tritage original documentation. Other than that, I think this is very nice board with features that sustainable for 99% of the projects. Either it be dual tool head, a heated chamber, or system with independent dual Z setup. I hope this video was useful. Welcome to the comment section. Leave your likes, dislikes, and I'd see you at the next one. Bye bye.